Hello, my name is Eran, and this is part 5 of my Roll20 Master series, specifically part 5.7, all about the collection. Now, this is very advanced stuff, but if you're starting to build campaigns inside Roll20, if you're getting really serious, then this is something you should look into. While this section will probably be mostly used by guides, there are some tricks here for everyone as well. But I'm going to start with guides because it's easier and shorter. The collection is split into three sections, the macros, the decks, and the tables. I'm going to start from the bottom. The decks and the tables will be used by guides. The decks are basically like any kind of card deck. Every game starts with a standard playing card deck, and each deck looks something like this. Basically, when you create a deck, you add a background for it and individual cards. Each card has a name and an image attached, and that is all that defines a card. You can have many different cards. For example, I created a Lines and Veils deck here that players can draw from and just toss on the map without anyone knowing who did what, just knowing that someone called for an X or a fade out. Here you have several settings regarding decks. Most are pretty self-explanatory, but let's talk about this. Cards in deck are infinite. You can have the deck that runs out or a deck that has infinite cards. Whether you always draw a random card and the deck always keeps the same cards, or whether you draw through the deck, then shuffle and repeat. You can output cards as drawings or tokens. Drawings are mostly stuff you want to add to the map, while tokens are mostly used by characters and creatures. When you have a deck, you can show it or hide it. And if you show it, you can shuffle it, deal, recall all the cards, hide it again. And if you want to just play a card game on World 20, though I suspect mostly people use it for Savage Worlds. Then you have tables. Tables are basically any time you want a random table and to roll on it, you can create a table with anything you want and roll from there. Let's see how it's done. First you click add and get yourself a new table. Then you can call the table whatever you want. You can set whether players can view the table and roll from it on their own, or whether it's only available for you. And then you just add items. Each item has a name, a weight. You can drop an image into it to represent it, or you can use the VTTS to set the image from a URL. You can delete it from this right here. And if you're wondering what weight means, what it means is that every time you roll for it, it counts the weight of the item and then divides it by the total weight of all the items in the table, and that is the chance that this item is drawn. So if you have 10 items and they're all weighted 1, then each has a 1 in 10 chance. But if you have an item that is weighted 5 and 5 items that are weighted 1, then that first item has a 50% chance of coming out. If you have the VTTS installed, you see this export button right here. It works the same as every other export button. It just exports the table into a JSON file, which you can later choose from here and import. This specific importer also allows you to paste in text from the table export and allows you to draw from the internet of things people have pasted up. And there's even a link here with a document filled with lots and lots of table. Have fun. Then when you have your table, you just click roll. It will roll up a random item from the table. If you have a table that represents a token, that is a table full of images, then you click token and it will output a multi-sided token onto the map. We'll get into multi-sided tokens in the tokens video. Now let's talk about macros. Hopefully the players have joined back in. Macros are basically a way to call a bunch of Roll20 code with a click of a button. To get yourself started, just click Add Macro. It will add a new macro untitled, which you can fill out. You just type the name of the macro right here, add all the code you want in here, and then you can select to show it as a token action. That is, each time you click a token, this macro will show. Or you can just leave it there, or even add it to the macro quick bar, which will show up at the bottom right here. You can also have it be visible to players or not, but I did find that this tends to complicate certain macros, so use at your own peril. You can even call macros from anywhere by using the hashtag. Just insert hashtag in the name of the macro and it will call it. However, nowhere in here and nowhere in here is it explained how to write macros and what types of code you can insert into. So you have to look around. So what you can do is use macros that other GMs have already prepared and you can just import them into your game using VTTS, of course. You can always just copy the text into your macros, but this is much more comfortable. As you can see, I've already added some macros in here. For example, I have a macro that shows a token action, and there's a lot of code here that just reads the ability mods of every ability in the D&D 5e character sheet and rolls them when you ask. I also have the trinkets table in case I want to throw something random at my players, 
lingering injury in case we're playing with that rule, and various other things. I've even built the 5e DMG treasure tables into Roll20 as macros, and I use them to roll random treasures. So if you have the VTTES, you can just export and import macros through this section right here. You just select the file you want, click import, select the macros inside the file that you want to use. You can select to duplicate or update the macros of the same name that you already have, and you have it all there. I will include a link in the description to my GM macros file, so you can just use it as is. If you're not using VTTS and you still want to use those macros, you can still download the file and extract the text from it and paste it into your own macros right here. I will even include in the description a link to the file which I use to collect all the text of all the macros that I use, so you can just copy and paste from there. However, if you have VTTS, you can just import them like this, and you can even disregard the macros used on the character sheet because VTTS also generates that automatically. But the first section will explain how to create a template using Roll20's code, how to collect macros into lists of labels, and how to create a dropdown that collates items from tables. And that's it for the collection. Please ask any questions you have in the comments below. I know this is a complicated subject and I'll try to help as much as I can. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.